<coughs> Hello and welcome to the exciting conclusion of VHS September in August on DVD with Barefoot at Bookman's. I should have took a breath before I started that conversation. Day 31, that's the exciting conclusion. Everyone is just clamoring to watch what's next. I mean, we're talking four views, eight views, 12 views, other even numbers, and probably some odd numbers. Good job. Good job, Barefoot. Okay, here's a VHS. Since it's the end of summer, why don't we celebrate with some Christmas? This is a Christmas carol released by Taco Bell. Do you have Taco Bell VHS in your collection? Anyways, what are we doing today? Oh, guess what I found? I was right. I did own the 15th anniversary of Reservoir Dogs. The matches we talked about and then a special disc. So now I have two Reservoir Dogs. So maybe I will keep the, the triple feature, Quentin, and give this to my son. Who knows? But I knew I wasn't that crazy. I did used to own all three. And I don't think that was the Reservoir Dogs I bought because I bought the three Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Quentin Tarantino that had the paper slip. My your is R W period. They were all from the same series. The you know there was uniformity, and it wasn't that one. But I've also owned Reservoir Dogs so many times. I have it on VHS behind me. Anyways, at least I'm not going crazy. Day 31. What are we doing? Oh, real quick. We can worship freely. We said we were gonna do some. Like there was a Pete Day, which we did it. There was a Mail Day, Sleepaway Camp, Trilogy, well, plus the, the part unfinished part four. We did that. And then I said there was gonna be a Dollar Store Day and a Richard Mailer Day. We've nixed the Richard Mailer, but we are, I've mentioned it like three or four times, we are giving a Richard Mailer Vinegar Syndrome DVD giveaway on Twitter. It's gonna have nothing to do with YouTube, so. Don't get us in trouble, but we got some Picaramas, which we are going to be giving away next month on Twitter. If you want to uh, get some free swag, go to our Twitter page, Bear Junk. Um, squeaky Clean Adult Films, <laughs> AKA G Rated Pornos, start back up next month. Okay, I promise. I'm back into the swing of things. Okay. Um, oh, so before day 31, check this out. A Richard Mailer day, a Pete Copey day, a dollar store day. This is the dollar store day. This conciding conclusion is just going to be packed with shit. Look at this. All $1.25, because it's not the true dollar store anyway, anymore. Seven features. Midnight Horror. Uh, for a dollar twenty-five, why not? Evil Little Things. The Brain Collection. Six Midnight Movies on two DVDs. The Brains That Wouldn't Die. That is amazing. And there was like five of them. Which means if you go to your local uh, Dollar Tree, go get them. It literally has the brain that wouldn't die, the head, the atomic brain. So good. I mean, just for the brain that wouldn't die, you need that in your collection for $1.25, plus you get five others. I couldn't believe this was there. This was like the gods were smiling upon me because I worship in... Uh, kind of worship. I don't know. It's a weird word since we're talking about Dianetics yesterday. But <laughs> Roger Corman Drive-In Collection. This has the original Fast and the Furious just in name. It's not anything like the one that regular people like. 
Pretty cool. Wild Ride, Beast from the Haunted Cave. Um, big Shot, what is that? High School Big Shot. It's crazy that they would have that. The Raven. I went through all their horror films. There's a tons of them. And there's a bunch of Shudder exclusives with no special features. If you're out there, Shudder, if there would have been a commentary on any of them, I would have bought them. There's a commentary on The Raven. I've heard this is horrible, but if it really is bad, check. I love that. And if it is a commentary, double check. I get to talk and hear, or I get to listen about the process of a bad movie. That is like an orgasm. The awful truth. It's a whole, a whole season for $1.25. Now, this is back when Michael Moore was cool. Do you remember that? He used to be cool, I promise. Brad Status. Never heard of it. Flipped by it. But then I was looking back and um, whatever, and I passed it again. And then I looked at it again, and it says, A film by Mike White, written and directed by Mike White, who is literally one of my favorites. Uh, he's been making some kind of... He did that Year of the Dog. He's made some more... Uh, I don't know. I hope they're still weird, but... He's been making stuff that I haven't really been keeping up with Mike White lately, but I used to love Mike White. He made one of the best, maybe the best independent film of all time, Chuck and Buck. He followed that up with The Good Girl, which is also amazing. He was a writer on Freaks and Geeks. I love Mike White. School of Rock. See, that's when it started getting a little too mainstream, but he used to be darkly strange, fascinating writer. And now he directs. He did not direct Chuck and Buck or The Good Girl, but he wrote them. So, a Mike White film I've never heard of at the Dollar Tree. Oh, let's add something to my Harmony Corinne collection, Beach Bum, which is crazy because the day that you saw Pete at Bookman's, he bought Beach Bum at Bookman's. They have two copies. So if you want one out there or looking for your Dollar Tree, because this has no, no special features at all, but I get to put it in my Harmony Corinne collection for $1.25. That's crazy. Crucible of Terror. Thin. Anyways, all of these were $1.25. Pretty cool, huh? At Barefoot, we love Bookman's. We celebrate Bookman's. Bookman's is a cool place. I go there and get a drink. And I can't even pay my rent. I hope my roommates don't hear that. I seriously, Pete, can I borrow $200? You know that CK owes me $750 for the shoot and then a couple hundred for labor. But I won't have that in time for rent. This is what a month of DVDs a day looks like. What are we gonna, what are we gonna? end with exciting conclusion one of my favorite things in the world as a Jason is Jason Friday the 13th the complete first series has nothing to do with Jason Voorhees but look at that font look at that font it says the special features is a sales presentation which, God, I used to love work at Blockbuster, and I would love those old tapes. I doubt if that's this. But on the back, it says, original, the special features on the back says, original network launch promo. So it might be like that. As a filmmaker, we all love trailers. Regular people like trailers, not just filmmakers. Trailers are trailers. They, they live on forever. But what always interests me with pictures that I like is if you can find the TV spots. Everyone knows the trailers, but do you know the TV spots? So I think that was, what, what was this again? Okay, original network launch promo, but on the inside, it just says special features, one thing, sales, special feature, sales presentation. So that's interesting for me. Nothing to do with Jason Voorhees. This was not a big hit. Um, they did three seasons of it. Now I own season one. It was $13.50. Should I go bring all these back to see if I can pay my rent? Um, six discs. Thank you 
Frank Mancuso Jr. The brass, the brass behind Friday the 13th brought us Friday the 13th series, 13th series, and it was not a success. It did not have Jason Voorhees kind of in the ilk of like Halloween 3, which is an indicator if I know I'm going to like someone uh, in the horror series. Also, Friday the 13th, the film, part 5. If people... God, everyone is so unoriginal. If you complain about Hollywood... Hollywood. If you complain about Hollywood, we can be friends. If you complain about Halloween 3, one of the best fucking movies ever, you are a dumb, dumb moron. If you complain about Friday the 13th, part 5... You are also a moron, moron, dumb, dumb. Those films are amazing. Get your stupid preconceived notions. And this is kind of in that world of like, there's no Michael Myers. It's not the real Jason. It's the font, okay? Represent, recognize the font. Uh, basically, it's going to be a bunch of horror anthology, like the new Creep Show. Thank you, Greg Nicotero. So it's just going to be a bunch of um, well-produced horror stories. And I guess it, it circles around um, like a pawn shop, kind of a needful things type dealio. And yeah, I'm excited. Friday the 13th is one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, we are working on a big project with Friday the 13th. Um, hey! That wasn't planned. Um, anyone who knows anything about me knows I fucking love Friday the 13th. And Friday the 13th Part 5, oh, he directed a porno. Oh, it's so sleazy. Look up what is the sleaziest series of all time. Uh, type in what has the most nudity. You will see in gore and in skin, um, Friday the 13th is at the top of all those lists. It's sleazy. So people don't like Friday the 13th Part 5 because it's too sleazy? It's too sleazy within the sleazy? It makes no sense. Too sleazy and the heezy. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. No, I can't tell you. I'm going to get the whole OG gang back together and we're going to all fucking sing Kumbaya and make millions. It's been real. Okay? It's been real boring. Uh, maybe we'll return next year for season two of VHS September in August on DVD with Barefoot at Bookman's.